Well, welcome back to another three-point edit tutorial. This time we're looking at an editing add-on. It's a fantastic new add-on written by Sunboy on the um, BA forums uh, Python, um, let me see, Python support. It's a new sequence add-on. Trim videos before adding them to the timeline. So it's a, a wonderful idea. Here's the attached file at the bottom. It's not a regular add-on just yet, just a script but it can be installed via your user preferences page uh, which I will show you uh, let me see user prefs here it is installed ready to roll you can define an in and out point of your source material in a file br or from your file browser and we can show you how that works so let me jump down to video editing set up. Here's a sequence and a file browser that I've set up earlier, uh, or just a regular scene. And what we do is select some footage. Now here's some shots that I've taken from my recently produced short film, Dream Big. Uh, let me see, we'll go to a wide shot of me in the kitchen. Uh, let's see, 775, this one. And I'll come over to my my uh, sequencer timeline and the um, the script that we were looking at just a mo moment ago called whoops here it is sequence add-on trim windows in and out points is actually called movie manager when it pops up on your properties and of course your properties you access by pressing the N key uh, it within the VSC um, sequencer window and what it what it asks you to do is set up a file browser like this and select the shot that you would like to perform your editing with then over here in its text dialog it asks you to name the screen layout that you'll use for editing that's because you're going to paste the shots that you trim up into this window or to this setup. So I have one called editing screen video editing. I also have another window called video source. That's where I will be trimming up each one of my shots. And the way this works is that we select a shot and we click on the edit range button and that will pop or place that shot out of the file browser into its own scene. As you can see here I've changed now, it, the script automatically changed my screen layout to video source and it's loaded up the clip that I wanted that I selected in the file browser and gave it a new scene name and the scene has a VSC layout just like this with only that shot that I wanted to use within it and it's been trimmed to the total length of that shot. There's me. So I'm going to find the start of that shot come down to my timeline, press S for start, play through and press E for end and that's effectively selected the uh, the region of my edit. I'll just scroll back down here I'll go to get the clicking on the get back button will return me to the original video editing uh, screen and the original video editing timeline. Oh, that's something else we didn't mention. I actually have to set, use this button at the top, set as timeline to make sure that this is the timeline we return to each time. Now when I press insert selected video it should take a trimmed copied version from the other scene or the, the source material scene. There it is. So if I zoom out like this you can see that it's trimmed, it now has handles at each end now if I press the period button on the number pad and zoom into the clip you can see that it's got a beginning and an end and it's placed it wherever my green indicator or playhead is parked. So I can play whoops, through that. I'm going to use my jump to cut add-on to jump back to the end of the previous shot. And now I'll scroll down to another shot. Let's see, I might go to a medium shot of me. So. 777. I've clicked on, I highlighted the shot that I want to use. 
I'll now go back to edit range and again it makes a new scene you can see them being added up here the next scene and it adds that shot in in that range so what I want is a medium shot step back a little bit press S for start play and E for end and we'll press the get back button to go back to the original editing scene and now I'll press insert selected video and that adds to the previous shot so now I have a sequence not a very good one but it's a sequence so I use the jump to cut to jump to the end of the previous shot there we go for some reason it was jumping to the beginning of the frame of the end of the frame so I'll jump out and come back and it jumps to the beginning of the next frame which is probably more useful so that I don't end up stacking clips although perhaps I want to stack clips if I need to do a J cut or an L cut let's put some of the shots of my kids being very noisy running through the house very noisy so that 169 I'm looking for I've already had a look through all these shots of course click on that I'll go to edit range and it makes another new scene just with this clip in it I come down here play coming back to the start of the clip press S for start play through and down to the timeline E for end now I'll press get back to go back to the original scene and I'll press insert selected video again now when I play this through but of course we can hear that the kids stop yelling so I, don't, I want them to actually begin sorry they start yelling instantly I want to make this a pre-lap edit so we'll make that go up a track I'll press the G key to drag it and the Y key to constrain it vertically so I can't go left or right so go up on track and I'll drag that back to make a let me see would that be a J cut in that direction okay so use the cut previous to butt up against the next edit We'll go back down, let me see, I might go to the medium shot. Now the medium shot was um, 777 I think, or was that the close up? Medium shot. No, let's go to the wide shot, 775. We'll go to edit range again, watch what happens this time. All we do is we go back to the original scene okay so it's the same shot that we had before it doesn't make a new scene and you still have the original settings now of course if I hit play I can't go past the out point that's no good um, you can play outside let me just pause this and have a quick look at something okay so with one of the other add-ons that I'm running let me see if I can find it here uh, that would be sequencer extra add-ons from Turian Carlos. They provide another wonderful resource. And let's see, and that's down here on the timeline. Uh, go to frame, trim to selection. Ta da! So now we've expanded the start and end times to encompass the entire clip. So I can play back through. Let me see, here we go. Exasperated look. So I print go down here press start and shakes head tells them to be quiet come back press E for end and get back press insert selected video and there we are okay so now I want to jump back to the previous cut let me see which clip was that that was 169 that I'll go back to the shot of the kids so I come back up here to 
169. I'm doing this rather than jumping manually to it because I'm not sure if the if the um, copy function will recognize what clip I'm pointing at. I think I have to enter it in its register. So I'm looking for 169. I'll press edit range again. I'll come down to frame, go trim to selection. They will get very dejected, so we'll go start, S for start, play, and they wander off. And end. Come back here to get back and perform insert selected video again. G key for to move it. I don't want to go left and right. Y key to constrain it. Go up a track. Take that back a little bit. Take my shush a little bit further along. And now, I might go in a bit earlier there, so let's go back to a close-up of me, which would be 778. So go down to here, press this close-up shot of me. I'll go Edit Range, creates a new scene with the new shot in it, and... I'll go Start, Play... end. We'll go to get back and this time we'll press insert vi select a video. Watch what happens over here when it tries to paste a video in. Okay, It's inserted it between the other shots so it stacks it on top so that the video, the new video, always takes precedence over the old one and so you could always add a dissolve there if you wanted to. So why don't we try that? So I'll select this track, this strip and then the that's the outgoing strip and now I'll click I now I'll select the incoming strip by pressing shift and right mouse clicking and then we'll come down to strip uh, whoops add sorry go to add effect we'll go to cross play there's my dissolve because if I want the dissolve to be longer I can drag the audio across like that and it stretches the dissolve. Now the problem of course is that the video and the audio are not linked so they go instantly out of sync. That's one thing I'm not so keen on with um, with uh, Blender unfortunately. Oh look at that. The cross hasn't updated. I'll try a refresh sequencer. Hmm, doesn't like it either. Anyway, that's a quick look at a uh, wonderful new tool for editing in the VSC. I think it will make life a lot easier for anybody who's interested in editing uh, with the VSC. So give it a look. Download Sequencer IOP for in-out points. Um, let Sunboy know how wonderful it is. Maybe there's some new additions that we can include for it. I think it's a, a terrific new way of editing. And if you can apply some shortcuts to the keys, I'm sure your editing process will go much, much quicker. Um, don't forget to build proxies. <laughs> They're always wonderful things. Um, makes the previewing go a lot quicker, which is what I've had turned on on all of these clips. Uh, anyway, thanks again for watching. And uh, see you later I guess thanks very much again bye oh don't forget to leave a comment if there's anything interesting that you think I've missed or anything you want to know about um, I really like some feedback and uh, maybe I can include it in the next video thanks again bye oh and one more thing to go on the other addendum I'd like to thank all of the script writers who are adding these new tools uh, they've done a wonderful job given how difficult it is to develop for the v um, for Blender, uh, given there's very little information around about the VSE. So it's really terrific to see all these new tools coming in uh, to the VSE. Thanks very much, and I think you devs, you know who you are. <laughs> bye bye.